So let us now uh, look at the discharging method. Okay. So the uh, we start with a very small example, a trivial example. In fact, to prove this, you don't really need any discharging method or uh, uh, anything. We can directly prove it from uh, some of the simple results that we have studied. But uh, we want to use it to just start, uh, uh, you know, uh, an idea of discharging. So we want to prove the following. A very planar graph has a vertex of degree less than or equal to 5. And we want to prove it using the discharging method. So how do you, how do, you uh, do this? So we start with the graph, which is a planar graph, and consider some embedding of this graph on the plane. Right? Because it is planar, I have a plane embedding. So let us look at this plane embedding of the graph. Now what we do is that once we have this embedding, we assign charges to uh, uh, you know the vertices uh, and uh, faces as follow. Okay? So given given a graph, given a graph, what we will do is that we look at uh, every vertex and then say that this vertex gets a, a charge uh, equal to its degree minus 6. So uh, this vertex is degree 3, so therefore it will get minus 3 charge. Okay? This was vertex degree 2, therefore it will get 2 minus 6, which is minus 4. Here I will get uh, 4 minus 6, which is minus 2, 1 minus 6 minus 5, 5, and minus 3, right? So all the vertices get uh, a charge, it's degree minus 6. I mean, if you have degree 20, 10, you will get uh, charge 4, right? If degree 20, then that vertex will get charge 14. Then every phase of the graph is also given a charge. It's twice the length of the phase minus 6, okay? So length of the phase is the number of edges in the boundary of the phase, right? So what are the edges that define the boundary of the phase? So that edges, uh, that number of edges is the length of the phase. Okay? So the number of faces in the boundary, a number of edges in the boundary is the length. So therefore, if you look at this phase, it has uh, three edges in the boundary. So therefore, its length is three. So its charge will be six minus six, which is zero. Again, two into three minus six which is zero. But if you look at the outer phase, it has one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it was 2 into 6, 12 minus uh, 6, which is plus 6 for the phase, outer phase, right? So this way, you assign charges to uh, the graph, right? Now, I want to look at the total charge in the graph. So what is the total charge? It is the total of all the vertex charge plus all the phase charge. So it's summation over all the vertices charge of B plus summation over all the phases, charge of F. Summation over all the vertices, charge of V plus summation over all the phases, charge of F. <coughs> now, what is this? This is summation, right, over all V. Charge of V is degree of V minus 6 and charge of F is twice uh, the length of the phase minus 6. But now, what is summation over all the vertices degree of V, right? This was one of the earlier results that we studied in graph theory. This is the sum of the degrees is twice the number of edges. So therefore, the first term will give you twice the number of edges, right? 2e. Now, we are subtracting 6 minus 6 as a constant for every vertex. So, there are exactly cardinality v many vertices. So, therefore, uh, minus 6 f, uh, 6 b. Now, similarly, uh, a phase, right, you know, an edge is inserted into at most two phases. So, therefore, if you sum over all the phases, you will get at most twice the number of edges, right, 2 e. But now we have two, two times uh, cardinality of f, right, length of f. So therefore, it is four times, right, at most four e. 
uh, and uh, then uh, minus six, which is over all the phases, so it's minus six. So I will get six into right uh, e minus v minus f. But this by Euler identity for a planar graph, the number of edges minus number of faces uh, minus number of vertices is minus two. Right. So therefore, it is six into minus two, which is minus twelve. So the total charge is at most minus twelve. Right. So what can we conclude from this, right? So no matter what planar graph that we started with, we see that the total charge is going to be less than or equal to minus 12. But if the total charge is negative, then some guy, right, some, some elements in the summation must contribute negative values, right? What are the negative values that is contributed by this uh, element? If you look at any phase, right, every phase boundary is at least uh, at least uh, three edges, right? So the length of any phase is at least three. So therefore, if you look at two f minus six, two uh, f minus six is always greater than or equal to zero because uh, the you know, length of any phase is at least three. So this is uh, greater than or equal to uh, six. So therefore, two f is greater than equal to six, and two f minus six is uh, uh, non-negative. On the other hand, uh, for a vertex, uh, you know its charge is a degree minus six. Now the total charge is negative. You know, uh, if you if you sum non-negative numbers, you are not going to get uh, total to be non-negative. Uh, so therefore, uh, some uh, charge should come from uh, a vertex which is negative, right? Because phases are all giving non negative values, vertexes, uh, vertices must give negative values. So it says that some vertex should give negative value, and a vertex which gives negative value cannot have degree greater than 5 because if the degree is 6 or more, its charge is also uh, non negative. So therefore, there must be Uh, some vertex whose degree is less than or equal to 5. Now, this tells, apart from, you know, uh, just showing that uh, uh, there is a vertex of degree less than or equal to 5, it tells that if you assume that the minimum degree of a planar graph is 5, then you should have at least 12 vertices of degree equal to 5. Right? This is an additional information which you don't get from the other one. Right? Because if you, if you look at uh, a planar graph where the, the minimum degree is 5, then since the total is minus 12, each vertex can only give minus 1 to the sum. So therefore, any planar graph with minimum degree uh, 5 should have 12 or more vertices of degree equal to 5. So this also tells that if you if you make uh, you know uh, uh, graphs with minimum degree five on let's say uh, on uh, eight vertices or six vertices or uh, you know, uh, ten vertices, right? These are all not going to be uh, planar. Right? They are going to be non-planar. Okay. Now let us look at a more interesting example uh, to see what exactly is the discharging method about. So <clears throat> let pi uh, be a class of uh, plane graphs, right? It's a planar graph with a plane uh, embedding, right? Pi be a class of plane graphs with minimum degree at least three. Okay. So every vertex has degree greater than three. And we assume that uh, these graphs does not have cut vertices. Just to make our argument simple. So we'll assume that we are looking at you know, plane graphs where the minimum degree is three and does not have any cut vertex. Okay. This is the class pi of uh, uh, graphs. 
Now, <clears throat> we have uh, a property P. Okay. So, the property uh, that I define is P of G is defined as follows that right? there is some vertex. And this vertex, right, it's a plane graph. So, this vertex is inserted into a phase F, right, because once you have an embedding, every vertex is inserted into several phases, right. So, a vertex is inserted into a uh, phase F such that uh, the degree of the vertex is D and the length of the phase, right, the number of edges in the boundary of the phase is L. And D plus L is less than or equal to H. Okay. So, the property. P says that right, you can find some vertex which is incident to a phase for a plane graph, a vertex incident to a phase such that the length of the phase plus the degree of the vertex is at most eight. You can always find if the minimum degree is at least three and there is no cut vertex. This is the plane. So the graphs in phi satisfy property P. So if you are looking at plane graphs, with minimum degree 3 and no cut vertex, then it will have always a vertex and uh, uh, you know, adjacent phase whose sum uh, uh, is at most 8. So, we want to prove this. So, we are going to use discharging method to prove this. So, let us start with a simple uh, you know, graph uh, example just to uh, as a working uh, example. So we start with this graph. Okay. So it has all these uh, vertices, right, and edges which are defined. And then now I am going to give some charges as before, right? So we are going to give charges. So for discharging, we need charges. So what is our charge, right? So the charge is the following, right? So the charge rule is the following: that every vertex gets uh, HR, its degree minus 4. Okay. Every vertex gets HR, its degree minus 4. And every phase gets HR, the length of the phase minus 4. Now, <clears throat> once this charging is applied, what happens to the graph? Well, you can see what are the charges after the charging phase, right? So, after the charging phase, you will see that uh, these vertices have, for example, this one has uh, initially degree 4, so the charge is uh, 4 minus 4, which is 0. It had uh, 3, so therefore 3 minus uh, 4, which is minus 1. Then similarly, it had 5, degree 5, therefore it has charge 1, so 0, 1, 0, minus 1, etc. And for the phases, for example, this phase had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, and 6, right, edges in the boundary. So, therefore, 6 minus uh, 4, which is 2. Similarly, other uh, phases will get uh, uh, its charge, 0 or minus 1 or 2, uh, etc., right? So, all the vertices and phases gets its charges. Now, the idea of the discharging method is to somehow show some structural property of the graph, right? So, in, in this particular example, we want to show some vertex which is incident to some phase, right? So that the, you know, the degree of the uh, vertex plus the length of the phase is at most 8. Right? Now, <clears throat> since we are looking at vertex phase incidence, let us define a vertex phase incidence. So, I define the vertex phase in incidence of a graph as a corner. So, what do I mean is that when a vertex like this is incident to a phase like this, this is a corner for me, right? So, vertex phase in, because it looks like a corner. So, I am just defining a term which is not in standard graph theory just for the purpose of this problem. So, I define a vertex phase incidence as a corner. Now, before uh, you know doing anything with the corner, I observe that what is the total charge after the charging phase, right? So, if I look at the total charge, it is summation over all the vertices, dv minus 4, plus summation over all the phases, 
length of f minus 4 right which by a earlier observation right similar uh, calculation it is uh, 2e minus 4v plus 2e minus 4f which is 4 into e minus v uh, minus f which is 4 into minus 2 which is minus 8. So if we started with this you will always get minus 8 as the graph for connected graphs right with the property that we are looking at we will uh, we will so again we will assume that the graph is connected because for each component we can see whether the property holds and uh, we can do some uh, you know some small uh, modification to the proof to do it for all graphs so we'll assume the graph to be connected for the time being okay so for connected graph we can use the Euler identity show that the total charge is minus 8 now so we define the incidence uh, of a vertex and a face as a corner and then uh, here are some examples right so you have uh, the uh, this vertex here and you will see that uh, it defines its degree is 3 it has exactly three coordinates for example this corner this corner and this corner similarly this has two coordinates you know each vertex has several coordinates uh, we can define right Now, once uh, you have this, let us uh, look at let us look at uh, what we can do further uh, with this idea. So we are going to define a discharging rule. So this is the reason which is called discharging method because after the charging phase, we do a discharging phase. Okay. So, in the earlier example, very simple example, we didn't do it, but uh, in general, we do a uh, discharge. So, what is the discharging rule? Discharging is basically moving around the charges without you know, losing anything, right? We just move around the charges. So, transfer the charges from one place to other, etc. So, in this example, our discharging rule is the uh, rules are the following, right? So, uh, the first rule is that every vertex distributes its charges equally to all of its coordinates. Okay? So it gives away all its charges to all its coordinates. Okay? Whatever I have, I am going to distribute it to all of you. Right? Then every phase right, uh, distributes its charges equally to all its coordinates. So every, again, a corner is a vertex phase incidence. So when I, when I have a corner, it has a vertex as well as a phase right so the phase has several coordinates vertex also has several coordinates so each phase gives its charges equally distributed to each of its coordinates so this is the discharging rule so what is the meaning of this statement right this says the following that uh, <clears throat> this says that uh, let, uh, okay let us observe something before we go into that Suppose a vertex is not a cut vertex. Okay? So if it is not a cut vertex, then I want to observe that uh, this vertex is incident to exactly uh, its degree many distinct phases. So what I am saying is that if, uh, if this vertex x is not a cut vertex, then these phases f1, f2, f3 to f5, right? all these phases are all distinct. If they one of you know if if one of these two phases is the same as the other phase, then the vertex will be a cut vertex. That is the uh, observation. Okay. You can think about why. Okay. On the other hand, if x is a cut vertex, you will see that you can uh, you may not have this property. That for example, the degree is here four, but there is only one, two, and uh, three three phases, right? Because this side and this side are the same. Uh, same uh, phase only, right? A part of the same phase. So therefore, if a vertex is not cut vertex, right? Then uh, we will see that it has exactly uh, its degree many distinct phases incidentally. So it has exactly that many coordinates also, right? Again, it is very uh, easy to see that if you have a cycle, right, or, or a phase, then it has its vertices and you know the number of uh, the length of the phase and the number of coordinates are the same. 
so that is the fact too if g has no cut vertices every face is incident to uh, length of the face many vertices right because uh, it's basically a cycle boundary is a cycle cycle has exactly number of edges and number of vertices to be the same now from these uh, two observations we can uh, we can see what the discharging rule uh, does to the uh, uh, to the uh, charges right so the discharging rule says for a corner v dot f its new charge right the charge of the corner will be like uh, if uh, phi uh, dot is the charge for the corners then for uh, any uh, corner v dot f right phi dash of f uh, v dot f will be from the vertex v the uh, corner will get uh, the degree of the vertex minus 4 the initial charge divided by degree of v because it the you know the vertex v distributes its charge equally to all its uh, phases right so it was exactly dv many phases so therefore uh, it distributes its charge to uh, uh, you know the dv minus 4 charge to uh, each of the uh, degree uh, of v many corner right so therefore it will be divided by d of v so that is the charge given by the vertex to its uh, corner and the phase uh, its charge is uh, length of f minus 4 and uh, because the phase has exactly uh, length of uh, f many vertices uh, that many corners are also there so therefore that phase also gives uh, uh, length of f minus 4 by length of f charge to the phase so that this is the only charge the phase is going to, uh, the corner is going to get and therefore the uh, charge of the corner is going to be this value so for every uh, corner you see what is the uh, what is the charge that it has of course what happened to the vertices uh, charge it has all disappeared right it has given away its charge whatever positive or negative equally to its coordinate similarly all the phases have given away the charges so the phases and vertices now have zero charge so uh, here is the uh, the rule in action right the 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 vertex with the degree 1 right degree 5 i mean degree 5 Uh, has charge one. It gives charge one over five to each of the five coordinates. So, in particular, to this guy, right? It gives a charge plus one by five. Similarly, the corresponding phase, right? F. It is also giving a charge. Uh, its charge is minus one. It has exactly three, uh, three neighbors, right? Three coordinates. So, minus one by three, right? Minus one by three. So that charge goes to this corner. So this char, uh, this corner gets. Plus one by five and minus one by three, so the sum of these two will be its charge. Right. Similarly, for each uh, corner, you will get. So once the uh, discharging completes, you will get something like this. Right. The, the total uh, charges in each of the vertices are going to be all zeros. Right. And charges in each of the vertices will be zeros. Charges in each of the faces will be zeros. And then the corners will have some charge. but now our observation is that the total charges uh, of you know the charges have all moved to the corners so the total charge will be in the corners will be the same as in the total charge we had earlier because we just moved uh, moved around the charges right we just moved shifted the charges from the vertices to the corners but we did not change it right we did not lose it so the total must be the same so the sum over all the vertices and faces the charges of the corners is uh, minus a right because minus a it was the earlier uh, sum of charges since the total remains the same the total is again minus a but if the total is negative then as we observed earlier at least sum of the charges must be negative because if everything is non negative the sum is going to be non negative so it says that there must be some corner with negative charge right so we can find such a corner right we we said that since there is a, you know the, there is a corner with negative charge 
you can pick one of so we see that okay there is some uh, corner with the uh, charge less than zero which we find right so pick one of them now if you take any such corner whose charge is negative let us see what happens to it right so what is the charge the formula is degree of uh, the vertex minus uh, 4 by d plus length of the phase minus 4 by l now this value is the charge of the phase and this particular phase has d minus 4 by d plus l minus 4 by l as a charge which is negative right less than zero but we know that the degree of any vertex is at least three because by assumption the class has uh, minimum degree three and the length of any phase is of course at least three because phases are all uh, cycles and this uh, the boundary will be will have uh, uh, at least three adjacent to one so therefore d and l are at least three right so we have this uh, inequality now we can just resolve this inequality by uh, some routine calculation so which is uh, what we do here so we have uh, d minus 4 by d plus l minus 4 by l is less than 0 just uh, cross multiplying we will get 2ld minus 4l minus 4d is less than 0 and this says that d is less than 2l by l minus 2 now 2l by l minus 2 when l is uh, at least 3 you will see that it is uh, you know less than or equal to uh, less than or equal to uh, 6 and uh, similarly l is uh, less than 2d by uh, d minus 2 again from the same equation which is also less than or equal to 6 so for l greater than or equal to 3 and d greater than or equal to 3 we have these two uh, inequalities now let us just add l to the first inequality let us say d plus l so d plus l is now less than this plus l which is l square by l minus 2 Right. because 2L by L minus 2 plus L, L square minus 2L, 2L will cancel, L square by L minus 2. But now D plus L is uh, less than you know, L square by L minus 2 from this higher inequality. But we know that since L is uh, between, right, L is at most 6 and L is at least 3. And if you substitute that for L square by L minus 2, you will see that D plus L is going to be less than or equal to 8. And uh, because L square by L minus 2 is going to be less than L. And that is it. So we have proved that uh, for all the corners whose charge is negative, this identity is true. And since there is at least one corner whose charge is negative, we get that uh, you can find uh, such a pair of vertex and phase incidence. So what we did uh, in this was the following, right? We started by <coughs> giving charges to the graph, right? Vertices and uh, vertices and uh, uh, faces. Then we use Euler identity to show that the total charge is uh, is a, a you know it's a negative number, right? Uh, and uh, basically you know uh, we can show that it is less than zero that is sufficient uh, and then what we do is that we use some uh, property of the class that we are looking at for example degree that is three right uh, planar graph etc right uh, some property uh, to to move around the charges right? and then you know use it uh, in a nice way that right? depending on what we want to show uh, we have to do it but we basically define some uh, rules of discharging that moving around the charges and after moving around the charges we again the sum right we did the sum again right but what we know is that if you move around the charges the total uh, charge cannot be different right? so after moving around what we want to say is that if certain structural properties are not there for example like the one that we saw we we established that the sum will be always different. So we say that because the sum cannot be different, the property must be there. So that is the uh, overall idea of the proof that we were looking at. So this is how one can uh, use the charging method to, to prove uh, 
uh, you know results on uh, uh, graphs and uh, especially planar graphs it is very uh, powerful so what we are going to do is we will look at one more uh, um, you know example which is a more uh, involved example uh, to see a better picture of uh, the discharge